hey, here we go. We're missing a lot of class. So I thought, let's let's have something today. So here's Cocoa Bananas. And we're gonna do a couple, we're gonna do four math problems with you. Sort of like your test for Thursday. So this one over here is timely. There's Celsius and there's Fahrenheit, two different temperatures. But they measure by degrees, and there's a conversion formula. If you put the Celsius temperature in there, you get the Fahrenheit temperature out of there. So uh, Australia had a temperature of 46.2 degrees Celsius last week. So what does that convert to for Fahrenheit? Well, all you got to do is put the 46.2 in there, and that's a calculator problem. So you're going to get that Fahrenheit number from 9 fifths of 46.2 plus 32. Not so bad. So, uh, you know, to finish it off, you do it on your calculator. I've got mine here. So you have uh, 46.2 divided by 5 times 9 plus 32. And I've got... Uh, 115.6 degrees. I've been in temperatures like 105 degrees, but I've never been in 115 degrees. That's pretty hot. That's a hot day in, in Australia. Now, it's famous that there is a temperature where the centigree, centi Celsius and the Fahrenheit are the same number. So let's find that one because it says for what temperature are these two readings the same? So if you th that means that Let's say you had uh, two thermometers next to each other, one in Celsius, one in Fahrenheit, and you had that outside. There's one temperature where the two thermometers would read the same. So what is that temperature? Well, it's the formula says C equals F. So that means all you have to do is change that C to an F, just straight substitution. What F equals 9 fifths F plus 32? That's an easy substitution. But look what you're doing. You're taking this equation and this equation and putting those two ideas together. So solving this, I would subtract an F from each side. That'll leave me with 4 fifths F. I'd subtract the 32, get a negative 32. So my fixed temperature is going to be 5 fourths times negative 32, which is kind of nice. 4 goes into 32 eight times. So the answer is negative 40 degrees. And that's the actual answer. The temperature of negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit is the same as negative 40 degrees Celsius. That one you don't experience too often in real life, but if you, uh, like like your thermometer won't show, show windshield. So even though we had a cold week uh, last week, we didn't get down to negative 40 on the thermometer. We had negative 40 for windshield, I think, one or two days. All right, let's take a look at another problem that I wrote up for you guys. I've got a box. Here's the dimensions of the box. We want it to be one unit higher than it is wide, and we want the volume to be uh, 1,320, let's say, cubic feet. Let's say it's feet. So what do, we, uh, what do we choose for x? Well, if you wanted to go through and try a 4 and a 5, a 5 and a 6, and keep multiplying by 10 until you get 13, 20. You can do brute force as long as you know that the answer is going to be an integer. But you don't know it's an integer. So let's uh, let's see what we do here. It says that it's 10 times x times x plus 1. That's volume. And we know the volume is 13, 20. So this gives me 10 x squared. Actually, let's just do this. I'm going to divide by 10. And I get x squared plus x equals 1. 32, get that all set equal to zero so that the quadratic formula applies the quadratic formula. And if you do that on your calculator, you're just entering a 1 for A, a 1 for B, a negative 132 for C. Do you want to get down? Okay, there you go. And the quadratic formula will give you x equals, it'll give you x equals 11 and negative 12. Obviously, we can't use the negative 12. So x equals 11 feet. So the dimensions of the box are going to be uh, 10 by 11 by 12. So that's that's the answer for that one. I'm going to erase and do a couple of more. I've got a couple of more types of problems to show you. All right. My favorite part of doing videos for classes is there's no questions. <laughs> 
Yeah, it'd be nice if there was questions, but that's not going to happen. So on this next one, we uh, are going to design an X-Men pin. The X-Men have a, a logo with an X inside of a circle. And we'd like to have the two, we want to have the two, uh, the two diameters perpendicular. So uh, let's design this pin, and that's that's all that we need. But we want to have um, uh, give equations of the circle and the two lines with endpoints. Typical McDaniel problem because you know it's completely open ended. Well, I would think that you guys would choose the unit circle, wouldn't you? But it might not be the easiest thing for finding endpoints on, but you could do that. So take a second to think about it. Uh, you're going to give me equations, so give yourself a set of axes. Here's your circle. And you want to have these two lines be perpendicular. So I, I, why not just go with this? Why not go with y equals x for that one? And y equals, and you should all know this, negative x for that one. These two slopes multiply to give negative 1. So you're guaranteed that the, the x in the middle has perpendicular diameters, which is what you want. <laughs> i got to show you what the weasel's up to. She is taking an empty bag from birdseed. She's trying to take an empty bag from birdseed down the stairs. Well, now she went inside of it. Okay. So you'll hear this rustling noise for the rest of this problem. That's the weasel trying to get the bag down the stairs. Okay. Well, now we have sound to go with the, the just plain talking. Well, if I've got this, and if you go with, let's say we go with x squared plus y squared equals 1. If we do that one, then we've actually done this problem. Here's the two equations of lines. Here's the circles. All we have to do is get endpoints, and that'll be x squared plus x squared equals 1, 2x squared equals 1, x squared equals 1 half, x equals plus or minus the square root of 1 half. And you can leave it as square root of 1 half, but it's also the square root of 2 over 2 if you want to rewrite it. So the big thing is x and y have to be equal on this line. And x and y have to be opposite signs on that one, on the other line. So let's let's lay down those endpoints. Let's just put them right where they belong in the picture. So this point would be the square root of 1 half, square root of 1 half. This point would be negative square root of 1 half, negative square root of 1 half. And that's because they're on the line y equals x. So the x and y coordinates have to be the same. And now this one's telling you. The x coordinate's positive, the y coordinate's negative. So that's square root of 1 half, negative square root of 1 half. And then this last one, the x is negative, the y is positive. So it's negative square root of 1 half, square root of 1 half. All right, so that's the fastest way to write down the endpoints, you know, where they belong. That's, that's good, so you can see in the picture. Now, you could have chosen a different sized radius. And if you had chosen a different sized radius, like for instance, x squared plus y squared equals 2 gives points like 1, 1, 1, negative 1, da, 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 da. So changing the size radius, because you know you're going to get x squared plus y squared, x squared plus x squared, 2x squared, that's what you're going to get. I have a factor of 2 available over here. It makes your life easier for the endpoints. And it was an open-ended problem. So it means you get to choose what happens. So that's up to you. But I, I love giving that sort of thing. Something where you do part of the design work. Hey, weasel. You want to be on TV again? I'm going to go get that weasel. Let's see if she wants to pay attention to the last problem. The last problem that I'm going to do on this video for you is uh, find the... Find intersection, intersections for x squared plus y squared equals 20 and the line y equals 1 half x. 
So you take a second to, to work on that. I'm getting a weasel. Hey, you! You get to be in the movies again. Come here. It's the YouTube ferret. So if you want to draw a picture, that's fine. But you know what it's going to look like. It's a circle whose radius is square root of 20. So it's a nice big circle centered at the origin. And then this guy is a line that goes through the origin because there's no constant term. But its slope is 1 half, so it's a, a line that doesn't have a steep slope. It's not like this. It's more like that. But it's positive slope. So if you want to draw a picture, I like to have a picture. It just takes a second. It's going to look like this, big circle, and then the line, see how the line is closer to the x-axis than it is to the y over here. Let's see if I can get that more in the picture. There, there we go. Oh, hello. Oh, such a good weasel. What are you doing? Are you going to bite me? <laughs> That's her hello. She gets you on the nose. Okay, you, you can get out of here. All right, so how do you do this thing? Now, this is good. This is going to be on the test. Because you guys messed it up on the quiz, many of you did, you got to know you're going to put this one half x entire in for that y, so you get x squared plus one half x squared. Remember the parentheses because it's that's it's the correct thing. This is y times y, so it has to be one half x times one half x, still equals twenty. So I have x squared plus 1 fourth x squared equals 20. Now you got to add, get a common denominator, make that a 4 over 4. So now I have 5 fourths x squared equals 20, and everybody in the room should know. Multiply by 4 fifths. 4 fifths. Because now you've got x squared by itself. I'm going to erase because I'm getting down to the bottom of the picture here. So I have x squared. That's why I multiplied by 4 fifths, was to get x squared by itself. And I've got 20 times 4 fifths. Well, I can cancel a 5 out of there. That gives me a 4. So x squared equals 4 times 4. That's 16. x equals plus or minus 4. And it says y is half of x. So y is plus or minus 4. 2. So the intersections, remember the y's and x's, y equals 1 half x, they have to be the same sign. So my final answer is going to be 4, 2, and negative 4, negative 2. Now if you want to, you can try them out in both equations if you want to be super careful about it. Well, you can see they fit this. Half of 4 is 2. But let's try this equation. 16 plus 2 squared, 16 plus 4 is 20. So that one checks, and then the minus signs are all going to work, because the minus signs on both make these equal, they're both negative, and then just squaring them both, I'm still going to get 16 plus 4 equals 20. So you can check. You can check! Yes! All right, that's all I got. Um, I'll see you on Thursday. That's tomorrow. If you watch this thing, it's okay if you don't. Bye!